This video is brought to you by Squarespace. All right, here we are. First video of 2024. Let's go. And one quick note, if you're seeing this video on a Thursday, that means you're a channel member, which this year channel members are going to be seeing videos at least 24 hours early, as long as I finish them on time before they go public on the following Friday. So just a heads up on that. If you want to become a member, there'll be more things coming out for members in the coming year. Uh, of course, I'm open to suggestions as well, but just want to get that quickly out of the way. But today we are talking about this guy behind me, the GS3 MP, which for many folks is a bit of a dream machine, but oftentimes when we're dreaming of our espresso machines and the future of our brewing lives, we're not thinking about the maintenance, the repairs, or the just general annoyances of day-to-day -day use. Instead, it's all rainbows, unicorns, bottomless flows, and godshots. And of course, there are plenty of those to talk about, but today I want to do a bit of a blend of both, because about a year and a half ago, the GS3 MP landed on my bar, and since then it's been my main studio machine for a lot of my tests and videos. And as I often do for my personal equipment, I like to do yearly check-ins, essentially updating my original review over the course of my machine's lifespan. And this week, I'll be breaking down my GS3 ownership into three categories. What I like, what I don't like, and the all-important question, would I buy it again? But before we get into the ins and outs of Espresso Machine Build, let's do a quick word about building websites from this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Using their powerful platform, you can create a beautiful site for your community or business, which allows you to connect to your audience through their comprehensive blogging features, online shop, or even exclusive sections of your website. Squarespace also utilizes a fluid engine website design system, which gives anyone and everyone the ability to lay out and create the website of their dreams with just a simple drag and drop. So head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash Prometheus to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into it. So to start things off, let's get into what I like, because truly the GS3 MP has a lot going for it. Both inside and out, its build, materials, and finishes are of high quality. There's a lot of stainless steel and brass from the boilers to the group. And at 73 pounds, there's no debate that corners or costs were cut on those major aspects. The optional glass panels that I have are thick, they look great, and they show no wear or fading after a year next to a window. And the wood accents, which are also optional, have proven to be sturdy and well treated for use in high heat and humid wet environments. And because of the use of quality materials, including the paint finish, which has no chips, nicks, or discolorations after over a year of frequent spurts and spills, it seems as though it's intended to stand the test of time. And on top of that, no parts or pieces on the exterior feel fragile. And I think I've used this term before, but I would say it's of heirloom quality, essentially meaning it's been designed, built, and engineered to be repaired and maintained and last essentially generations, as long as you're willing to put in a little bit of time and money to do so. And from the end user perspective, at least from the barista, and of course I'm talking from my personal opinions here, but I'll of course always stand by the simple mechanical tactile experience that the MP version of the GS3 provides using the manual paddle. Granted, I do have my complaints, and of course that's what the next section of this video is for, so I'll get to that in a minute, but having used the flow control on the E61 quite a bit over the last couple of years, as well as the electric paddle on the San Remo U, I will say that the Lamarzoco GS3 MP sort of threads that needle right between them, where you do have that point-and-shoot capability that you kind of lose on the E61, especially when it comes to building pressure, and then you also have you know, a bit more of that tactile uh, mechanical experience that I did miss when I used the San Remo U. When it comes to the espresso quality itself, between the original review and now, my thoughts on that haven't changed. The pressure control coupled with the large boiler stability has helped push both my espresso and my understanding of extraction to the next level. And on that same note, at least while we're talking about performance, the steam power is still the best I've used to date on a non-commercial, non-220 volt machine. And finally, in terms of maintenance, after that small group leak I shared with you in the original review in 2022 that was obviously covered under warranty, I've had no issues with the GS3 over the last year, in 2023. 
previously I talked about the water waste in the original review and briefly explained the engineering of how pressure is controlled, but let's just do a quick overview. So essentially, the conical valve that's inside the paddle stem is designed to allow the water into the group to increase pressure and reduce the flow of water into the group to decrease it. But as you expect, or perhaps you already know, when the water that's trying to come in the group is blocked, that water has to go somewhere. And that somewhere, unfortunately, is down the drain. So in an effort to show you the actual waste for a six bar espresso with a short three bar pre-infusion, I've emptied the drip tray, pulled the shot, and this is what's inside the tray. Which as you can see is a lot of wasted water. On average, it's about one cup or roughly 240 milliliters per shot. So if you were to do some rough math here, that would mean not including the water that goes into your shot itself, you'll be able to pull about roughly 10 shots of espresso before you need to refill the two and a half liter water tank inside the machine, which granted isn't a lot. Also, there's a lot of paddle track left unused with peak pressure in most cases landing around the halfway point. And of course, I know that the pressure in the group depends a lot on the dose and also the back pressure produced by the puck itself, but I would like to see the additional track used to allow for a smoother and more forgiving adjustment, and maybe a bit of a loose idea of the pressure associated with points on the track itself, which would make for more speed and accuracy when ramping up and down. In the last section, I also talked about the positives of the steam performance, but now let's get into the negatives of the steam usability. And really, overall, it's just awkward in general. Having the wand sit directly in front of the on-off lever is one thing, but having to reach around the pitcher oftentimes to engage it or hold it at different points for smaller amounts of milk still feels odd after a year. And on the topic of awkward usability, let's talk about the GS3's user interface. Out of its six buttons, only one has an obvious use, and the others tend to require holding or pressing others in tandem to open up and navigate menus and options. So long story short, the user interface itself isn't really user focused or user friendly. So oftentimes when I wanna make adjustments inside the machine in terms of temperatures or anything like that, I find myself picking up my phone and using the Lomberzoko app, for better or worse. But the app also has its flaws. I'm often signed out randomly, there are outages, failures to save changes, and when updates happen, you oftentimes don't really see changes in its performance. And personally, these complaints have followed me through three separate machines using the Lomarzoko application, the Mini, the Micra, and now the GS3. And throughout my entire time using the application, I've had to go online and do research and try and figure out what's going on. And oftentimes I see people shrugging it off with the excuse that Lomarzoko is not a software company. But in my mind, that's not really a valid excuse. Lomarzoko is one of, if not the largest espresso machine manufacturer in the world. Their machines are expensive and they're only getting more and more reliant on the application. For instance, the new Micra can't even change temperatures without the application. So if you're going to app lock basic functions on the app, the app better work and hire more people to make sure it does. All right, so here we are at the main question. And that is, if I could go back in time, would I buy the GS3 again? Now, when I think back to the last quarter or so using those really high-tech heavy hitters like the Senesso ES1 behind me and the Sanremo U, I did feel happy. I did feel content coming back to the GS3. Even with the complaints that I have, it feels like a great fit for me and my preferences at this point in time. It's mechanically sound, it's tactile, and its looks have really grown on me over the last year. It's classic, there's no doubt about it. So my answer to that all important question, if I could go back in time, would I do it all over again? The answer would be yes. I would buy the Lamarzoko GS3 again, if I were to go back. But I do know now that there is a lot of really solid competition out there. I spent the last couple of years trying a lot of them. And I will say now that barring some kind of major unforeseen change, the GS3 will be my last La Marzocco. And really for me, that's because the upgrades and updates to their current line of machines, the machines that they've had and that have been around for many, many years, just really haven't improved much over that long span of time. 
and there's a lot of other manufacturers doing much more exciting things and charging much less money. And if I wanted to upgrade my Lamarzoco GS3 to the next in the line would be the Leva X1, which is $15,000, and the Strata X1, which is $20,000. So if I'm looking for something that has comparable or even new features, I'm looking to spend exponentially more and more money. And on that bombshell, it's time I start wrapping up this video and my first year with the GS3. So as always, I'll pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the GS3? And is there anything about my user experience or my ownership experience that I missed or didn't cover that you'd like to hear? Drop those in the comment section down below along with any other comments or questions. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Prometheus for content throughout the week. Help support the channel by considering becoming a member for exclusive access. And as always, stay caffeinated, Pony Boy.